Hey art nerds, today I am back with you with another really basic drawing tutorial. Um, I love creating these kind of tutorials to share with you guys because I want to make art and drawing and comics as accessible to as many people as possible. And not everybody has the financial means to pay for art classes. Not everybody has a library willing to support their artistic endeavors by providing the books that they need. And not everyone had the background or the support they needed to pursue art the way they wanted. So some of these really simple tutorials are made to help address that. And I hope that people of all ages will find them useful. Today we're going to talk about drawing just basic volumetric shapes like some of the examples here. This is a really really helpful skill for those of us who may not think of ourselves as particularly creative people. Believe it or not, I can't picture things in my mind the way one would think artists do. I am super reliant on a system called volumetric drawing and constructive human anatomy to help me draw the things I want to draw. So I want to teach you guys kind of the basics for this, give you guys a good foundation for this. And uh, hopefully this will propel you into feeling confident drawing other things like figures and like environments and like perspective. And I have tutorials for all of those here on this channel. So we're going to start out with a sphere. Basically, I need you guys to be able to draw. If you wanna be able to progress, you need to be able to draw circles. You need to be able to draw squares and rectangles. You need to be able to draw ovals. You need to be able to draw triangles. You need to be able to draw straight lines or an approximation of straight lines. And this should get you pretty much started. So let's start with spheres. Spheres are pretty simple to begin with. We start with a circle. And you guys will notice I'm kind of overdrawing my circle. What I'm trying to get is an average of lines that looks like a circle. And I draw it really loosely until I've got what I want and then I'll tighten it up later. And there's a couple different ways when we're sketching, we indicate that something is a sphere. We may draw hemisphere lines like this, or we may begin to apply shading. And I have some tutorials here on this channel where we talk about shading, we talk about light and contrast, both for alcohol markers and in watercolor. So if you're interested in creating volume, creating mass with your art, then you might wanna check those tutorials out. And I have a big old playlist of really helpful art tutorials here. I'll link that down in the description below. And if you guys ever have any questions, if you ever need any extra guidance, you can join me on my Discord server, The Paint Box. I'll pop a link for that in the description below. So we have a couple of different spheres. Same principle applies to ovals. And what I did for this one is I just applied some shading to help you understand the form because with almost all of the other shapes we're gonna be drawing today, you're going to have planes that's gonna help you understand the different forms. Let me see if I can find an example of something with planes. All right, so this very simple basic eraser, right? This is a rhomboid, it's cube-esque shades, more rectangular than a cube, but you guys know what I mean. Anyway, this is what I mean by planes, each individual side of the object. Circles don't have planes. Most ovals don't have planes. They are round, they're spherical. So these, we utilize shading sometimes to help show that it has form. So spheres. Pretty simple. Now we're gonna talk about cubes. And this kind of ties in with some of my tutorials on perspective, because whether you see the top of the cube or the bottom of the cube, kind of depends on where your horizon line is. So when I'm drawing cubes, a really basic way to start drawing cubes is to draw a square. And if I wanna see the top of my square, I draw two lines going in the same direction, actually three lines, but two lines on the top, one at the bottom. And then I drop a line down, I'm kind of guessing. 
If I wanted to do this perfectly, I would create something called a perspective grid. And I have tutorials on this channel on how to do that. Drop a line down and then I connect it to this corner and this corner. So this is one way to draw a cube. Another way to draw a cube is to draw a diamond shape. And this is going to be the top of our cube. Then we drop our lines down. We draw another diamond. Basically, for the, these purposes, same size as this one. This is what's known as isometric perspective. So like video game, like, like old pixel video games were typically an isometric perspective. And then you might want to draw through to show the back corner. That's up to you. Okay, what if we want to draw a cube where you can see the bottom? Okay, you can still start with the diamond. You basically just work in reverse. And then what can sometimes make this more easily understood is by coloring the faces of our cubes so that people can kind of better understand So those are some really simple ways to draw a cube, but what if you need to draw a rectangle or a rectangular cube, okay? So what I usually do is I start by drawing a rectangle. Then I draw another rectangle. And then maybe I draw a really long one like this. Then we draw it through So we can see the underside of a rectangle. So when you see the tops of your cube, that means your horizon line is above the cube. When you can see the bottoms of the cube, that means the horizon line is, wait. Yes, okay, tops, it would be underneath. Sorry, my brain flipped out on me. I bet that happens to you guys too sometimes. Okay, so now we've drawn spheres, we've drawn cubes. Let's progress on over to cylinders. So with cylinders, cylinders are just circles plus rectangles. So think of like a Coke can. So I usually will start with my cylinders. So if you don't want to draw it through, you can shade it a little bit to kind of imply that it's a curved form in space. So like this shape here would be a cylinder. If we look at it 100% straight on, cannot see the top, cannot see the bottom. It does kind of look like a rectangle, but as soon as we start rotating it in space, we can see the circles. So another way to draw a cylinder is from the side starting with the circles again, and then we just use the lines to connect. And then what if we wanted to draw really foreshortened? That means it's super close to the viewer and then it recedes into the distance, a foreshortened cylinder. Well, often I'll draw my midpoint for my circle, drop a line down, draw the sides of the cylinders going towards that point, but not necessarily hitting it. Now we have a cylinder that kind of looks like it's coming towards you. And if we wanted to do it from the side, pretty much the same. And I recommend you guys practice drawing these shapes, practice breaking down real life objects into these basic shapes, practice manipulating these shapes in space so you guys can better understand how they're drawn and how they rotate in space. All right, so we've got cylinders. Cones are pretty much like a cylinder, except 
these two points meet at the top. So like an ice cream cone. So we only have one circle. We'll find the midpoint of the circle and you can do that by drawing an X and bringing a line up and then you want to connect it to the two outermost points and you have a cone. So it's a triangle plus a circle. And this is going to be a cone from the side. And the more you draw these things, the more you practice these things, the easier they're going to get. So practice, draw, 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 draw. What if we want this point coming to us? So we've got our point. Then I draw my circle. And kind of like the cylinder, if you want to show that it has form, you might add a little bit of shading to it. All right, so cylinders, cones, how about pyramids? So pyramids are interesting because they can be based on a triangle. They can be based on a square. They can be based on a hexagon, etc., 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 until you have a cone. When you have so many sides that you can no longer see the sides, you have a cone instead of a pyramid. So for pyramids, let's start with a three-sided one. We're gonna draw our triangle. Gonna kind of figure out where the middle point is. Didn't really do the most accurate job. Gonna draw another triangle and then depending on your viewpoint you might draw this back one here let's rotate our triangle a little bit so from our midpoint we connect to all three of our sides and you're gonna have three faces because you have three sides on your triangle Let's say you want to see the bottom of that pyramid. So we might pull it out into space. So really it just looks a lot like that. Or it looks like one of the Egyptian pyramids. What about a four-sided pyramid? Well, I find it helpful to start with my square find my midpoint by drawing an X and finding the middle of the X that divides your square. And then we draw a three-sided triangle on top of it. And we draw four of those because there's four sides on our square. So you need to have four triangles that all come to a point at the top. Draw it in a diamond shape. and gives you a different view. Actually, I think the Egyptian pyramids are four-sided, but y'all will probably correct me, so y'all would know. And then if we're doing a hexagonal one, I'm not, I'm not doing it, I'm sorry. I would usually, if I were gonna go with this, I would go with a cone first, because as we get more sides, right? And then I would figure out how to draw a hexagon in my cone and then I would connect I did it y'all what it's not good but I did it what 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 yeah I did it I didn't think I could and that's why it's good to try new things sometimes okay so we have drawn spheres, we have drawn cubes and cuboid sort of things, we've drawn cylinders, we've drawn ice cream cones, we've drawn two types of pyramids. I think that just about covers the basics of three-dimensional shapes. If you guys are interested in learning how to do volumetric drawing, what you're going to do is you're going to combine these basic shapes to make more complex objects. And I want to grab one item and I'll do a demonstration of that for you guys before we say goodbye. All right, so not quite what I had in mind, but this is a good start. Kind of looks like a little rocket ship. It's actually glue. This one is interesting because it could be kind of a cone. We could start with a cube or a, a rhomboid, 
or we could start with, an, with a pyramid because it does come to a point. So unfortunately, my viewpoint is going to be different from your viewpoint. So what I see and what you guys see is not going to be quite the same. You'll just have to bear with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try drawing it using a few different base shapes. So we're going to start with our cube. And I want you guys to notice when there are seams or body lines on the object, that can be a good point, a good tip for how you should draw your own perspective lines. We have, it kind of comes into the bottom. The whole thing has been kind of rounded and soft, softened, but I will just sketch the basics first. And then we have kind of a pyramidal shape up here. Okay, so that's kind of the basics. Now let's kind of tighten everything up. So even rounded objects like this can be broken down into kind of more square or more angular base forms. Okay, so this is with it based around a cube. Let's try it based around a pyramid. So we kind of start the same, but we taper it off like this. So part of the problem is it's already tapered way more than the original. It's going in way too much, but we're going to roll with it because like I pointed out in another video, the way one person breaks down a 3D form might not be the same way someone else breaks down and understands a 3D form. And then at the top, we've got a small pyramid and it's very rounded. Yeah, already this is like not working. And then we have a cube down at the bottom. See, it just doesn't look quite enough like it. Okay, now we're gonna try one more. Let's, let's, let's start with a cylinder instead. I've misused my space. Mmm, see, I don't think a cylinder is gonna work. But let's pop a cone on top of that cylinder because why not and another one down here and we have a party cracker and then sorry came on me before I could press pause sorry about that y'all don't mean to get y'all my allergies and now I'm kind of squaring off the sides which tells me our original cube Achoo! sorry Achoo! Ugh, my heater's on and it's making my allergies act up okay anyway and then we've got kind of our weird round okay actually the cone when we started refining it more and the cube were our strongest with the pyramid being our weakest. Okay, I've got one more complex shape for you guys and this one is a doozy. It's this super ugly cat. For those of y'all who don't really know me, I have an ugly cat collection every Christmas and every birthday. Joseph gives me a new little nightmare to add to my collection and uh, this one they can't be intentionally ugly either they have to someone has to have tried okay so this one's neat because we, we have some worms coming off of them but also we have a lot of different shapes going on so let's start with his body which looks like it's a cylinder and then we have kind of a sphere for his head and again, your angle is going to be different from mine. We have little pyramids, little, little triangular pyramids on his head. Then we have his accordion, which is kind of a cube shape. 
a long cube shape that actually curves in on itself. And yes, you are allowed to bend and curve your 3D shapes as you need. Then we have his arms, which are more cylinders. And his paws, which are also basically little spheres. Then we have his legs, which are also cylinders. And you can't really see his tail too well, but it's like an S shape. And then his bow, you can just kind of freehand it from there if you wish. And then we have all these little wormies coming off of him, and those are all like long conical things. And then he's got this wonderful, delightful little pig nose. You know, one time I drew one of my ugly cats for a scat inking class and the class really criticized how ugly and poorly I drew the cat. So I had to bring it in to show them that someone made a cat that ugly. So now I'm drawing the terrible little nightmare wormies that are coming out of his face. I think Joseph voted to call this one Cthulhu Kitty. And he's got more of these little nightmare squiggles than I kind of care to draw. But hopefully you guys get the picture, <laughs> get the idea. And I really want to strongly encourage y'all to practice drawing this way, practice looking at the world this way. It's going to be much more useful for understanding perspective if you kind of already can break down the world into individual geometric shapes. If you've got some practice drawing like this, it's going to be a lot easier. And drawing, being good at drawing, improving your drawing, that's a deliberate choice you make every single day of your life. Every day you draw, every day you draw from reference, every day you do study, every day you do research, every day you practice, you're making an investment in a future where you can draw the way you want to be able to draw. And I know so many people who make excuses about why they shouldn't have to, why it's not worth it. And then I get to hear them complain that they don't draw as well as they wish they did or they don't improve as fast as they wish they did. And I'm still not where I wish I was. Um, I wish when I was younger someone had shown me these principles. I wish it had been accessible for me. It wasn't. That's one of the reasons why I push it. Not everybody has this just innate drawing ability. Not everyone has this innate understanding of how to draw the things they see. And that's why volumetric drawing can be a boon for some people. It certainly was for me. It helped me understand how the world is made up. So every day you put that time in, every day you practice, every day you draw from reference, or you practice a new skill, or you do some art studies, is an investment towards the day where you can draw the way you want to be able to draw. So I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today with my uh, drawing basic 3D shapes tutorial. I hope you guys will join me for the still life video that I actually recorded before this one, but it's gonna be coming after this one now that we've covered the basics. I'm gonna have all this available to my wonderful art nerds over on Patreon. Uh, you guys can join the art nerd community and get early access to videos like this one. They've already had this video for quite a while. But you can get early access to videos like this one by joining me at patreon.com slash natosoup. I don't make a lot of money doing this sort of art instruction on the internet. I don't know if you guys have figured that out. Sub 15 subscribers or under 15 subscribers does not exactly mean NordVPN is banging down my door to give me sponsorships. And I don't know that I would accept it from NordVPN even if they did but if you like what I do and you want to help me continue to do it you can join me on patreon they are my sponsors or you can send me a tip little thank you via coffee at ko-fi.com slash natosoup 
money accrued from those goes to helping me create more videos like this. It justifies me spending the time teaching you guys these things. It also helps take care of my wonderful cat Bowie who has been having some very expensive vet bills lately and he is asleep right now so he cannot say hi. I'm not gonna wake him up for it but just know that he really appreciates your help and support. Or you can take one of my classes. I'll have links down in the description below to other tutorials you guys might find helpful, useful, and informative. And I will also list my favorite drawing tutorials playlist in case you guys want to learn more about drawing. If you guys have any questions or if you're looking for some encouragement or inspiration, you guys can join me on my Discord server, The Paint Box, and I'll have a link to that down in the description as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope to see you guys again really soon. Bye guys.